Well, welcome to the Pac-12 Buick pregame show inside our San Francisco studios alongside former All-American Dan Dickow, our coach Ernie Kent. I am Ashley Adamson and I'm going to start off by the other side. Devontae Mike Lacey, he had 18 as we mentioned. He's averaging 23 since his return six games ago, but he's not getting a whole lot of help. No, you're exactly right. Not getting a whole lot of help. DJ Shelton has played extremely well in Pac-12 play. Seven double-doubles now, but after those two, you really don't know what you're going to get on a night-in, night-out basis. They've had some flashes from guys like Q Johnson, Kernich Drew, Royce Walridge, but they don't have that third guy that they can consistently rely upon to make shots or make plays for other guys. And you're putting way too much pressure on Devontae Lacey throughout this season to make plays and he's doing a heck of a job of it but he has to have help these last couple weeks of the season has been centered around the fact that Brandon Ashley is now not going to be in the lineup dynamic wise right now to this offense Dan how different is this Wildcats team going to be now over these next couple weeks without him well I, I think it's going to have an impact for sure um, both on uh, both sides of the floor in particular on the defensive end of the floor because he covers up so many things with his athleticism, his ability to, to get in passing lanes, to, to rotate defensively. On the offensive side of the floor, you don't necessarily call plays for him, but he's always in the right position, sliding along the baseline, getting in open areas, getting into ball screen actions. Um, but the thing to me is, now it's going to present an opportunity for Aaron Gordon, who's basically, he's had a phenomenal freshman year, but he hasn't had plays called for him. He's been able to kind of fly under the radar and kind of find out where he fits in. Now it's going to be an opportunity to see just how skilled he is as a freshman. Yeah, and here's Lamar the thing. is right. They play extremely well at home. DeLon Wright, Jordan Leverage, those guys are extremely comfortable at the Huntsman Center. And if you look at them on the, the whole of the year, 17-2 and two at home, good teams win at home, great teams win at home and on the road. If they're going to break through either this year and make the tournament or next year, they're going to have to learn to win on the road. Me, Nigel Williams-Goss, has done what he needs to do. He's gotten 30 minutes a game. He's made shots. He's made plays throughout the year. Few things stand out to me. He has a high turnover rate. He doesn't get to the free throw line. Doesn't seem to always make the big play. And that's led to Washington not getting the amount of wins that maybe he would need to win the award. Because a lot of times these big awards, you want to go to teams that are in the one, two, three pecking order of the league. What's the answer offensively then for this team? I mean, we saw the numbers. They, they are on the down right now. Well, I, I think this is a team that needs to get back on the defensive end and create opportunities in transition. They, they haven't scored the way they had earlier in the season, but I think it's also going to be on the flip side on the half court. Catch the ball, swing it, get into second side pick and rolls, let guys like Nick Johnson come off of pick and rolls on the second side, get into the paint, create things for guys like Gabe York, TJ McConnell's a great spot up shooter. Yeah. You got to get offense out of the, out of the flow of your uh, second side, not just necessarily throwing it into the block on the first side or doing things on your first action. So yeah, guys are going to have is the deal right now with this Buffalo's offense. Well, you know, I, I think the thing is, is you hit it right on the head. Arizona's defense is head and shoulders above everybody else's. So you can't take too much out of that loss. But since Spencer Dinwiddie has gone out with the ACL injury, they've kind of mixed and matched a few things at the point guard, tried Xavier Talton there at times, Jerron Hopkins. But I think they've really settled on Eskia Booker getting the bulk of the minutes. Since he's taken over that role, his points per game, his assists per game has gone up, but more importantly, his field goal percentage has gone up. And that's something that we were all concerned and worried about was if he had the ball in his hands for more opportunities to make plays, how would those turn out? Yeah. And I think he's proven that he's not capable of being at Spencer Dinwiddie's level for big minutes, but he can get the job done and help this team keep winning. BYU won 11 of the last 12, and they lead the all-time series history, 129 to 125. Played every year in hoops since 1909. Heck of a rivalry. Excited to see this game, this crowd get into it tonight. Mika and Lenz, and it's Mika and the Cougars in blue. Carlino at the top. And we're going to see Utah tonight in a number of different defensive looks. Collinsworth, no. Rebound and put back by Mika. Well, that's one thing he can do extremely well as a freshman. Very mobile, very agile, very strong at 6'10. Crashes the offensive glass. Leverage to answer. It's for two. It's good. And early on, showing you a part of the skill package that he's added since last year. The ability to put the ball on the floor and create. 
What we talked about in the open is Collinsworth feeds Mika and he'll get fouled by Loveridge. Talked about the familiarity between these programs. You know, Loveridge, a local product, Mika as well. We can go down the list with a lot of guys who know one another from way back. Well, a lot of Utah kids. Here we see two Utah kids matched up at the top of the key. Jordan Loveridge, just a one dribble pull up over the top of Tyler Haas. That's something that Jordan Loveridge was not able to do last year. Made his living last year driving, using his physical frame, trying to get to the rim. And he slimmed down and added a few elements to his game. He has. He's dropped 25, 30 pounds. And in doing that, he's become a better athlete, able to change speeds, change directions much better, and use his skill. Make a missed a pair. Right. Coverage again. It's two for two. Five, two, running Utes. I'll tell you what, he came to play tonight. Hasn't hosted a ranked team since 2007. They trail number seven, San Diego State, by four points here at the half, 28 to 24. Back in Logan, Utah, alongside Dan Dickow. I'm Steve Quist. Your thoughts so far of this first half? We kind of knew it would be tight. I mean, San Diego State came in favored by just two points, and it's lived up to the village so far. Yeah, well, I think if you're Utah State, you've got to keep San Diego State off the offensive glass. Ten in the first half. If you're San Diego State, you must be better pick and roll and weak side defense. Utah State with seven turnovers. What you don't see on there is rebounding, and for the Aztecs, they have ten offensive rebounds. So if you're Utah State, you don't turn it over seven times, and San Diego State doesn't get ten offensive rebounds, perhaps the Aggies would have the lead. J.J. O'Brien misfires. San Diego State shot 33% in that first half, and they missed their opening shot of the second half. Well, they're a team that struggles to score, and we're seeing that tonight with how they're shooting from the field. San Diego State has got to be aware there's nine seconds left on the shot clock. Got to be able to get into something quickly. 59.1 to go. Thames with two to shoot, long range, three is good! Oh, talk about the ice water in your veins. Uh, he might be the player of the year. Big time shot as the shot clock winds down. He's got 28, no other Aztec is in double figures, and another turnover. And an unopportune time for Utah State and meddling the foul. The Aztecs have a four-point lead with 38.9 to go. Shot clock going down. Pick and roll up top against the zone defense. Xavier Thames over the top of Preston Medlin. Good defense, better offense. How about this? Xavier Thames, three for 11 to start, seven for his last 10. 28 points on 10 of 21 shooting. And again, 81% for the free throw line. Well, here's the thing. You want to have somebody on your team who wants the ball in pressure situations and who can make plays. San Diego State has that guy in Xavier Thames. Showed it at Kansas, has showed it a number of other times throughout the year, but absolutely showing it here tonight. 